Coming up in this video, Elon teased when we can expect SpaceX to try and catch a Starship for the first time. The Tesla Robotaxi wireless charging speed and battery has been teased. Uber wants to partner with Tesla on Robotaxi. Regarding space, we got Axiom's Artemis Moon spacesuit design unveiled. The Chinese one having already been unveiled a few weeks ago. Then we got the SpaceX Falcon Heavy launch of the Europa Clipper. SpaceX suing the California Coastal Commission for political bias. We got a lunar rover unveiled by Venturi Astrolab. And rumors that soon a groundbreaking discovery of an extraterrestrial civilization might be announced. We got a lot to cover today in this news video, so let's get started. So after the spectacular fifth flight test of the SpaceX Starship and Super Heavy rocket on Sunday, October 13th, what can we expect from the next flight test? Well, in the next one, SpaceX will try to land the Starship on land vertically as we saw with the Starship SN10 fly test back in March of 2021. But Elon gave us an interesting hint what we can expect in the fly test after that one, which then would be the seventh fly test of the SpaceX Starship Super Heavy system. He posted on X that hopefully early next year, SpaceX will try to catch the Starship as well with the launch tower arms. So basically in the January to February timeframe. It would be spectacular and of course needs to happen as well, because of course for a rapid reusability of the entire Starship and Super Heavy system and not only of the booster, you will of course need to catch the Starship as well. I can't wait to see that one happening. Now after the fascinating robo-taxi unveiling on October 10th, which happened incredibly just three days prior to the fifth Starship flight test, there still were some unanswered questions. Well, at least one of these unanswered questions might now have been answered. Namely, how fast the wireless charging of the robotaxi is going to be and some details on the battery. Apparently during the event, some animations were shown, which we didn't get to see during the live stream itself. However, some people in the audience made videos of what was shown on the large screen on stage. They saw a robotaxi driving over the wireless charger and someone wrote on X that it showed the Cybercab charging at 19 kilowatts at a 35% state of charge. Now that might appear like slow charging if we compare it to a supercharger at say 250 kilowatts of charging power. However, keep in mind that the battery of the robotaxi will probably not sport a very large battery. I would say maximum in the 80 kilowatt hour range because the Robotaxi is rumored to have a very high efficiency and so it will not need a large battery for a high enough range. And thus at a charging power of 19 kilowatts, it would take about four hours to charge the entire battery. This will probably happen overnight without any plugging or unplugging and then the car can just continue driving people around. We also got some details on the batteries, which will be used in the car. Namely, it will be the 4680 LFP batteries, meaning the 4680 form factor Tesla in-house built lithium iron phosphate based batteries. The energy density of those won't be the best, okay, that's clear, but they can be produced super cheaply and thus scaled massively. And it's all about scaling, guys, low cost and high output. It's also interesting that we see in this animation here that the Tesla Optimus robot will also use the 4680 batteries. In other news, Uber wants to partner with Tesla on the robotaxi. What a surprise, because if they don't, they are basically dead. So of course they have to, and this might be a win-win for Tesla and Uber. Uber will be a huge customer of Tesla, buying I assume many thousands of robotaxis and they could be actually quite excellent for the transitionary period when the car isn't yet reliable enough for full level 5 autonomous driving and human oversight will still be needed from time to time. Also, Uber has a great network and experience with that matter, so I think it's good to see this step forward. I think both Tesla and Uber will greatly benefit from such a partnership. And now suddenly back to space. Man, I'm all over the place today. 
Axiom Space and Prada. Yes, yes, Prada. You have heard that correctly. Have revealed the design for the spacesuits which will be used for the coming US moon landings, starting with the Artemis 3 mission, which foresees a SpaceX human landing system landing on the moon sometime in the next years. The suit is called the Axiomu or Axiomu or AXEMU, short for the Axiom Extravehicular Mobility Unit. It packs a lot of features such as in suit nutrition, 4G and LTE communication, enhanced mobility, advanced biomonitoring, and of course, a lot of other cool features. See this picture here for a list of the full features. Hopefully, we will see these bad boys on the moon still before 2030, because the target date for Artemis 3 keeps getting pushed back and back, and the Chinese certainly aren't sleeping. In fact, the Chinese have only two weeks ago unveiled their own lunar spacesuit, which they will use in their moon landings that are currently planned to happen in 2029 or 2030. The suit is called the Fei Tian, which could be literally translated as flying in the sky. It has a similar design to the Axiom one, and I assume it will offer very similar, if not the same features. But here, Prada wasn't involved. Maybe it's because the Chinese saw that movie here. Anyways, it's great to see more and more hardware come together on both sides, China and the US, for the future moon landings in this new moon space race, which is going to heat up even more in the coming years. Fascinating times in which we live in, in this new lunar space race. In other news, we had on Monday, October 14th, just one day after the SpaceX Starship flight test, a Falcon Heavy launch carrying the Europa Clipper spacecraft on its long journey to the fascinating icy moon of Jupiter, called Europa. The $5.2 billion spacecraft will arrive on April 11, 2030 at Europa, where it will fly through the plumes of water vapor that get regularly ejected from Europa. Water which comes from deep within the moon, where a giant liquid ocean is suspected beneath the kilometers thick ice crust. The water vapor will be analyzed for signs of life. If life will be confirmed, it will be an amazing step forward for exobiology and our understanding of how life forms in the universe. And of course, also how common life is in the universe. In other news, SpaceX has officially sued the California Coastal Commission for political bias on October 15th. The reason being that they denied SpaceX the request to increase launch frequency from the Vandenberg Air Force Base in California, from where SpaceX often launches Falcon 9 rockets. The California Coastal Commission denied SpaceX's request to increase launch frequency, giving as the reason Elon Musk's political views. We shall follow how this lawsuit unfolds with great interest. And back to the moon again. Man, I should really work on a more logical order for these news items here. I, I promise to have a better order next time, okay? In the next video. Anyway, so Venturi Astrolab has unveiled an interesting lunar rover at the International Astronautical Congress on October 15th. They call it the FLIP, short for Flexible Logistics and Exploration Lunar Innovation Platform. FLIP is slated for launch in late 2025 to the moon and will have a 30 to 50 kilogram payload capacity. Other space companies or NASA could pack scientific equipment of any sort onto the rover. Lessons from FLIP will go into the larger Flex rover, which Astrolab plans to send to the moon in 2026 on a SpaceX Starship lunar cargo lander. And now to something completely different. There are rumors floating around that soon a remarkable discovery will be released. Namely, evidence of an advanced technological alien civilization in another star system, because a so-called techno-signature has been supposedly detected. Sir, I think we discovered something. I I'm, I'm getting a signal here. Well, what kind of signal is it? I think... I think we have a techno-signature. This is according to science filmmaker Simon Holland, who says to have received information that two teams are working to publish the results of a potential alien techno-signature, meaning a signature from a technological source. 
the signal in question is the BLC1 or Breakthrough Listen Candidate 1, a narrowband signal which was detected in April 2019 at a frequency of 982 MHz, coming from the Proxima Centauri star system. Of course, in order to be confirmed as a real signal, it has to have at least a 5 sigma confidence level, meaning the probability of it being a statistical fluke is below 1 to a million. Two teams are set to work on this. One team at Berkeley using data from the DISH, a radio telescope at Australia's Park Observatory, and the other one being a Chinese team using data from the largest radio telescope in the world, the Chinese Fast Radio Telescope. So don't get excited too soon as this could turn out to be a false signal, but it is said to even have Doppler shift consistent with being emanated from a rotating planet in the Proxima system. Fascinating stuff, we will certainly keep an eye on how that story will unfold. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please like and subscribe, since we will continue making lots of videos on the topic of spaceflight and technology in general. And please consider supporting us on Patreon or via a YouTube membership, because this would allow us to make more and even better videos. Thank you so much for watching, have a nice day wherever you are and see you next time.